Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Today we're talking inflation. I know we've talked about it in the past. I'm just going to do it and give you some relative information that, you know, where we are in the cycle, how much longer the, the government will do this, which don't kid yourself, the government is encouraging this inflation at this time for a number of reasons which we'll go into what we'll do is we'll talk about the u.s inflation numbers uh what we're seeing in canada and yeah we're gonna go from there so right away u.s inflation data came out yesterday and it was higher than expected as you can see core inflation came in at 0.4 instead of an estimated 0.3 which it doesn't seem like a lot but it's a pretty big deal. Like that is 33% higher than predicted, which in inflation is a lot. Like that means we're at 4.8 for the year instead of 3.6, which as you can see from the other numbers, basically we're, we're gonna be at, like the US is gonna probably be at like a 6%, um, 6.5% inflation for the year. So, I mean, a lot of the commenters are, is 5% U.S. inflation the new normal? Will inflation, be, inflation become a bigger concern? Sticky U.S. inflation increases pressure on the Fed. So basically what they're talking about is that, you know, the way the Fed or the uh, Bank of Canada controls this is with interest rates. As a real estate investor, as a stock market investor, cheap interest rates are good for the underlying asset value of the things that I am buying, which basically means that people can get cheaper money. Corporations get cheaper money. They can grow, they're going to do that rather than sell stocks. They're going to do bond raises and either buy back stock or use that to invest in the company, both of which as long as, you know, they're getting a good return, it's increasing the value of the stock with their leverage, their cheap leverage, basically. If interest rates rise, then that's gonna be worse for my underlying investments, stocks, uh, real estate. Because again, the more it costs somebody monthly to be able to purchase these things, then they're gonna pay me less to buy them, whether it be real estate, whether it be stocks. Here is the trend. So. The goal for the U.S. and Canada is between a 2 to 3% inflation rate. And basically what happened in COVID was inflation was either nil or we had deflation. So we had uh, prices going down because nobody was buying anything. So this is the trend line that we're seeing here. And with this trend line, is that's the target that they're going to hit. So everybody's sitting on cash right now. You are losing money at half a percent to a one percent every month just sitting on cash go out leverage everything to the tilt and no i'm just joking about that too i mean be responsible uh yet here we are right so core inflation is well above the trend line a lot of that is to do with these last couple months here may june july new car prices went up astronomically so we all know there's a chip shortage out there and that increased prices on new vehicles, even if you can even find one at this time. And we're still seeing some rising prices on new vehicles right now, yet, you know, that seems to have leveled off. Obviously, we're seeing an increase in um, fuel costs. I don't know, you've been to the pump lately. It's not cheap. Uh, whether you're in the U.S. and Canada, so oil prices are going up. As people come back and start flying again, traveling again, going back to work, right? We're going to increase the demand for oil. You know, oil's a cartel. They're working to obviously make as much money as they can in that cartel. Perfectly example, energy prices rising as demand outpaces supply. A couple things happened, especially in the gas. We had the hurricanes, shut down some refineries which increased the gas prices and you know they're basically using oils as quickly as they can get it natural gas um same thing i was reading an article the other day about natural gas in europe uh being way more expensive than the in north america so if we could ship it over there if our politicians actually did something right and put a liquid natural gas poured in then we could be making a heck of a lot more money and they could be making more tax money but 
I don't think that'll happen because we're all going to be on green energy by 2025. Sounds sounds about right, doesn't it? Uh, shipping costs are still an issue. Another article I was reading was basically talking about some of the big stores. They're hiring their own containers. So they're hiring their own private vessels that go to these smaller ports rather than Los Angeles or any of these other things. They're sending their own trucks there to pick these things up and they're getting it done. So are we going to have a lot of goods for Christmas or should you be buying now? Again, I think we're probably going to be okay if you're not with like the huge in demand not things but we've been seeing this here this is us by the way uh but we've been seeing this in canada as well that low skilled labor is having its fastest increase in pricing you know followed by mid skill and high skill uh i mean they're all increasing but obviously low skilled labor has was hit the hardest as we can see here during the pandemic and it's coming back fourfold. Anybody who was in a low skill job and actually wanted to upgrade during the pandemic has gone and done that. They've lost a lot of that labor moving forward. Canada has gained back all the jobs they lost during the pandemic. We're still at a 6.9% unemployment rate because more people have come into the country and more people have joined the workforce since uh, COVID started, but we have gained all the jobs back since COVID and it's just going to continue from there like september numbers for job growth in canada we, were huge like we had 150,000 basically full-time employees added in september and again anecdotally i know restaurants we're still hiring we're still not running full shifts we're hiring another admin so if anybody you know uh, has bookkeeping experience has some um, real estate experience and wants to work on our team as an admin maybe hit me up on instagram uh, yeah, so that's that's the RBC report um, in Canada. So that was the U.S. So in Canada, you can see that we're actually not back to the trend line. Now, we do have a higher target rate that we're trying to hit. They do inflate more here than they do in the U.S. for whatever reason. We're not back at that trend line for CPI without shelter. So without houses. We're above it with houses and rent and stuff like that but cpi x shelter then we haven't hit that trend line again so what does this mean what do we do with this information why do i read these reports why do i delve into this well again interest rates what does that mean for interest rates so we're we've gained back all the jobs but are we at full employment that they've said so i still believe that the Bank of Canada is probably second quarter next year for raising interest rates. I get this all the time. Should I be taking a fixed or a variable? I think we're winning with variable right now. I've seen variable rates at uh, prime minus 1.25. I mean, that's free in my opinion. So you know what? I'm taking variable on all my stuff right now, using leverage smartly to invest, and I'm taking the money at whatever, 2%. And I'm going out there and I'm making, you know, I was with, I was golfing with a guy yesterday and you know, you can get 15% in his fund, monthly payments. You know, I'm again, doing my options trading and doing very well there, five, 6% per month returns. I can just buy real estate and be able to return that quickly as well. So whatever you guys are doing, invest smartly and definitely Definitely, definitely, unless you're, you know, hundred billions of dollars, millions of dollars, even then use leverage. Why wouldn't you use leverage right now? Because again, you're borrowing money at le less than, I don't know, probably about 30 to 35% of what actual inflation is. So every year, the loan you borrowed is going down in terms of real money because inflation is going up. These are just things you need to think about out there. Everyone, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday.